Hey everybody, so at the time um, of this video, it is November the 19th, so we're towards the end of 2021. Um, most of you are curious, I'm curious um, about the 780G for the United States or North American market. Um, some other countries, I know the UK currently has a 780G, um, but we are still waiting on the FDA approval for the 780G within the United States. So um, I've noticed through some Facebook groups that Medtronic has kind of let some information slip about the 780G, um, maybe give us an idea for when it could be released for the US market. Um, I've seen a couple different posts. Um, I do have a screenshot of an email that was sent um, from Medtronic to some customers. Um, we're gonna kind of talk about that a little bit um, and then also talk about the differences between the 770G and the 780G. And if you happen to be on a 670G, I believe that's the other, the old one. Uh, let me make sure, I think so. Yeah, oh, excuse me, the 630G, my bad. Um, it's been a while since I've been on that pump. Um, so we're gonna kind of talk about the differences and why if you're still on the 630G, why you might want to upgrade uh, to the uh, 770G. I feel like the 630G is not the right name. Anyway, if you're not on the 770G, the pump before that, um, that had re the first released auto mode, I do apologize. Um, so we're gonna kind of touch on that a little bit and uh, let's get started with this week's video. All right, so I have uh, corrected myself. The 630G um, does not have auto mode. It's just Medtronic's basic insulin pump um, that has basically manual mode on it um, for those needs, and you can use it with the Medtronic CGM. The 670G was the first insulin pump from Medtronic that brought us SmartGuard auto mode. Um, uh, several users had problems with it, didn't really like it. Um, I didn't have the best relationship with my 670G. Um, about this time last year, I believe it was the beginning of December, so not that, it's been almost a full year, I've been on the 770G. Um, the base, best way for me to describe the 770G to somebody who's on the 670G and trying to decide if it's worth it or not, I feel that the 770G is the equivalent of um, Let's say if you a Apple or Android, whichever one you prefer, let's say you get that brand new device. Um, so Apple just came out with the iPhone 13. So let's say you got an iPhone 13, but it's running the previous iOS system, which was iOS 14. Um, I feel like that's kind of what the 770G is. Um, because it is able to do so over the air, like software updates through the user's phone or the computer, um, I feel like it has the updated um, hardware, but it's running that older software. So I feel that based on my experience, I like the 770G better. Um, the pump seems more responsive to learn and adapt to how my life is going with my diabetes and that overall process. So the benefit, if you do have the 770G now, or you're in the process of getting one, when the 780G is released, you will be able to download that newest software on your 770G and immediately get started with the 780G. It will then transition. Um, there is um, a different transmitter that is supposed to come out, which will be the Guardian Link 4. Um, for the 780G and that transmitter and sensor combination will not require finger sticks, uh, sticks or calibrations, I don't believe. Um, so to kind of get some information on the 780G, um, I'm kind of having to go to medtronicdiabetes.co.uk. Um, um, if you just want to look at their website, you can just Google Medtronic Diabetes UK and you can get the, the UK website and it has information about the 780G since it is already released there for that market. So the 780G is supposed to have 90% fewer injections versus uh, manual daily injections. Uh, there's no finger sticks and then they also say that 90% of people who previously used multiple daily injections 
with a CGM or CGM therapy agree that the 780G insulin pump system was better. So, uh, the 780G Medtronic says can help you achieve time and range goal of greater than 70% and a, and a hemoglobin A1C goal of 7%. Um, I, I'm just going to go ahead and share with you guys. I, with the 670G and my 770G, I maintained an A1C of 6.9. That was with the most of the time in auto mode. Um, if you put in forth the work with the pump, the pump can pretty much give you that A1C um, if you maintain a greater than 70% time and range. For most of us, it's just learning the way your body functions and getting the pump system tuned into what you actually need and making sure that you stay on top of, oh, I'm gonna eat in 30 or so minutes. Let me go ahead and get some insulin um, on board so that way my sugar doesn't spike too high. Um, most of the time, I have issues with high blood sugars because I didn't carb count correctly or I didn't program my pump in enough time for the insulin to get working in my body and start, um, start working correctly. Uh, so therefore the pump is kind of playing catch up and I have a high sugar for a little while and then it'll come back down. Um, for the most time, most of the time though, I do have a, uh, very good number. Um, you can kind of see, I'm going to show you my graph with my 770G. So I did do two boluses earlier for when I was going to eat. So my sugar was a little bit high. It was starting to trend down. I did that, uh, meal bolus and then I waited a little bit and then I actually ate. And then once I completed eating, I did the second part just so that way I didn't take all that insulin at, at one time. And for the most part, my sugar is relatively in range. Um, I'm going to kind of pull it up here for you guys so you can see what my uh, time and range is. Let me see where I get that. History. So I'm setting my high limit at 180 and my low limit at 70. And I'm going to average for seven days and kind of see what my pump says. So on a seven day average, um, I'm within range 71% of the time. I'm below 71% of the time and I'm above 180 about 28% of the time. So just kind of show you guys that information here. Sorry, it's inverted, but we got 71%, 28% and then 1%. Um, so I mean, I, I believe the statistics that Medtronic um, is sharing. Um, if I had eat a more healthier food or foods and stuff like that to where I didn't have to program for as many carbs, I could 100% maintain 100% time and range, but I just don't want to do that. Um, I want to enjoy some things. So that's kind of, you know, the way I, I feel about that. So um, the biggest, the next step in auto mode from the 770G to the 780G is the 780G is supposed to do... Um, correction boluses. So for example, if I program for 15 grams of carbs for a granola bar and um, after the allotted amount of time that my insulin on our active insulin time was set for and my sugar is still high, the 780G would then do a small correction bolus to try to bring my, my blood glucose level back down to the, the targeted range, which that is currently something that the 770G cannot do. The 770G can increase micro boluses or your for your micro basal um, amount, but it has a set limit per hour that it can give you like a maximum and then a minimum. So to kind of help s treat that differently, the 780G hat can then do a correction bolus, which can give you more insulin if you needed to kind of correct your high blood sugar. Um, so kind of, you know, back and forth, I think the 780G is going to be a, a good step forward. Um, my concerns with the 780G um, would be, can the pump handle um, the quick adaptations um, and changes with lifestyles like the 770G can? If it can and it can maintain that, then it should be great. Um, I'm also curious about the uh, how the no finger stick calibrations are going to work with the CGM. Um, I do happen to know somebody, a couple people with a Dexcom and I've been kind of talking with one and then helping another one get used to their Dexcom. 
So um, I've kind of got a little hands-on with, with both of those, and I'm curious to see how the Medtronic product works. Um, I know a lot of you are a lot of people who are, have had Medtronic and have made the switch to T-Slim and Dexcom. Um, they, you know, they like that because it's different. I'm not saying that Medtronic's for everybody. Some people who love it and some people who hate it, you know, that's okay. That's our opinion, just the same as iPhones and Androids. Um, not saying that anybody's wrong. One might be better to help them with their lifestyle. However, I personally have considered switching um, just because I haven't had good feedback or I haven't really loved the 670G and the 770G have been having issues that nobody can really give me an answer for, which is frustrating for a user. But um, when I do have a problem, that customer service to get a replacement pump to me within 12 hours, because they're gonna overnight it and have the issue resolved and the replacement pump already on the way um, in less than a 15 minute phone call is amazing. And that's one of the primary reasons why I um, am probably gonna stay with Medtronic. I got the pump and the CGM through one manufacturer and I don't have to deal with two different companies. Everything is dealt with one company and everything is in house with them. I can troubleshoot sensor problems and I can troubleshoot pump problems and go back and forth. Whereas I'm not sure how that well that works with some T-Slim and Dexcom customers. So that's my personal opinion on it. Um, I do want to thoroughly use the 780G and see how I like it um, when it is released. So let's kind of dive back in on that email that I mentioned earlier. So Medtronic sent an email to some customers that stated, um, did you know that you can start on the 770G system now and get access to our Minimed 780G insulin pump through a no cost remote software upgrade except expected in the early spring? So Medtronic is expecting the 780G to get FDA approval and be able to roll out to current 770G customers in the early spring of 2022. With that being said, I don't remember exactly where I saw the post. I will put a copy of that um, email image right here for you guys to kind of pause and read through. Um, but with that being said, I also heard from another Medtronic user that a Medtronic employee let it slip that they're expecting the 780G at the beginning of March, around the March 5th through the 10th. If that's kind of the way things are shaping up over the next couple weeks to a month, end of December or beginning of January, I would expect to kind of start hearing rumors of the FDA approval for the 780G within the US. Um, we do know it is gonna take Medtronic probably a couple weeks after the approval is received to start the process of rolling that out um, to users. So I hope that we do have the 780G software update rolled out um, to users by the beginning of March, I'm not sure what is gonna happen with the um, Guardian Link 4 sensor, if that's gonna come out at the beginning of March as well as the software update, or will that come shortly after? Or it could be the beginning of March for the Guardian Link 4, and the 780G software update could come out a little sooner. So I'm not 100% sure. I will try my best to keep you guys updated um, with any updates that I do receive or happen to notice on um, uh, Facebook. Um, I'm also a Medtronic ambassador, so if they do, share some information with us about the 780G and um, say that we can share it um, with you, I will uh, do that as soon as possible. So if you have any questions about the 780G or the 770G, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below and I will respond as quickly as possible. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, rest of the week or the rest of November, enjoy your Thanksgiving um, or your holiday season, whichever you prefer it. And I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful time or holidays, excuse me.